I'm Pastor Jodel and welcome to Destined Nation. Today's Monday Messengers. So, wonderful teens, let us all worship the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 2, verse 11. In the English Standard Version, it says there, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So one more time, let's recite this very easy and short verse all together. Psalm 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Amen. So for our challenge, every Monday messengers, we encourage you to post our verse of the week. In this case, Psalm 2 verse 11 on your Facebook timelines and of course, with our hashtags, Destination, Destination Monday Messengers, and I accept the challenge. Amen. Let's continue to be messengers of the gospel and continue to encourage one another to serve the Lord Amen. and rejoice with trembling. 
So see you again next week for our Monday Messengers and stay tuned for tomorrow's challenge in my Tuesday. So this has been Verse of the Week and always remember, you are destined for Christ! Hi teens, this is Pastora Abby and this is Evangelism 101 and today with me is... Hi, I'm Gwen and I'm Lush. Yes, and as Monday Messengers, we will be learning today what is the best time to share the gospel. It says in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, let's come and read it. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The time is now. Always have your Bible ready, anywhere and anytime. Yes, teens, it's always better to have your real Bible with you even if you're sharing online or you're doing personal evangelism. Always get ready with your verses. Did you see, teens, the last part of your Bible? In the last part of your Bible, you have extra pages for your notes. Instead, you can use it to put your reference verses that we have studied in a few episodes back about sharing the gospel so that when you get the chance or have the opportunity to share the gospel, you just look at the back of your Bible and you get equipped and you can start sharing the gospel. Psalms 107 verse 1 Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Always pray for opportunities. Come on teens, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much, O God, because Lord, you are the God of open doors. Lord, we pray for opportunities for us, for our teens, O God, to be able to share the gospel. And Lord, as you have equipped us with your word, Lord, we pray, O God, for people that you will lead to us, O God, that we will be able to share the gospel to. And Lord, we pray that their hearts will be good ground for the gospel. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, teens. See you. Hello, hello to you teens! Welcome back to this segment called Teens in Tune. I am Pastora Crystal and once again, we have another song feature for you that is definitely Bible-based and the singers are solid Christians. For today's episode, that is the song How Do You Love Me by Dan Reams. Dan Reams is an award-winning singer-songwriter hailing from Salmon Arm, British Columbia in Canada. But he currently resides in Nashville, USA. Did you know Dan is actually a pastor's kid and yes, he grew up in church and there he learned how to play music instruments or instruments and also to sing. His music career commenced in the year 2010 with his album entitled Your Strength that was independently released. Up to this day, he is still continuing releasing songs that is for the glory of God. Amen. The song How Do You Love Me is from his 2019 extended play and it talks about the love of God that even in our verse, he chose to love us first and because of that, we learned to love and be loved as well and to show love to the people around us. Amen, teens. 1 John 4, 19 to 21 says, We love because He first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. Forever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Let us listen to the song. Honestly, how do you love me? How do you love me? Love me like you do so well. La, 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 la. How do you love me? How do you love me? Love me like nobody else. Yeah, it's crazy cat and mystery that I can't understand. But you're showing me again and again how you love me. 
we like our song feature for today that is the song how do you love me by dan james you can check it out on our spotify playlist entitled destination teens in tune always remember teens that it is important that we choose the songs that we listen to that god's word always be our standard in everything you are destined for christ god bless you hi teens welcome to compass I'm Pastor Jadel, and this is Monday Messengers. And every Monday, we are talking about how to be an ambassador of Christ Jesus. So today, let's open our Bibles in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 37. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So today, let us look at the heart of Jesus Christ. Jesus' heart is always after the unsaved people of this world. And if we are going to be ambassadors of Christ or messengers of Christ Jesus, then we must have the same heart as Jesus had. A heart that is after the unsaved people of this world. So today, let's see. In Matthew 9 verse 35, it says there that Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. So we can see Jesus' heart by looking at his actions in this verse. That this verse mentioned that he went through all the cities and villages. And during that time, understand with me, that there are no cars, just like what you are hearing right now. No motorcycles, no bikes, no, no other means of transportation. And the only way to travel is on foot. Right? And so, Jesus going throughout all cities and villages and teaching in synagogue after synagogue, that means he labored in preaching the gospel. That means on foot, he traveled from one place to another and kept on doing again and again and again and again, preaching and healing the sick. It was a hard work, right? In the Greek, this word means to lead or to carry about. No? The word he went throughout all cities means that he traversed, he went after he went around, all right, to walk around the vicinity, right? So that means it is not just one crusade in this in Manila, one crusade in Mandaluyong, or one crusade in Jerusalem, one crusade in another city. No, he went, he traversed from one area to another. He walked around the city. He walked around the village and kept on doing again and again, preaching and teaching and healing the sick. Right? So this is not a one-time crusade. He went from synagogue to synagogue. Again, doing the things. Teaching, healing the sick. Right? And everybody receives their healing. Imagine if you have ever been in a place where people heard that someone is healing or someone is performing a miracle what would people do they will flock in that location right so imagine what jesus's crusade or jesus's teaching time looks like a lot of people and everybody gets healed so why is jesus doing these things it is because his heart is full of love for the people in john chapter 3 verse 16 we know the heart of god the father and the heart of god the son for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life since the very beginning god loved us so much that he actually left heaven right and he went here on earth to live like a man and to be crucified on the cross to be mocked to be beaten right and to die on the cross for each and every one of us he left his heavenly function his heavenly place just for us to be saved from our sins that is how god has shown his love for us and the bible also speaks of while we were still yet sinners christ died for us 
And in verse 36, we can see again the heart of Jesus. When he saw the crowds, crowds, the people, you know, whether they are not a worshiper or not, whether they have a knowledge of who he is or not, he had compassion. And this feeling of compassion is more than just empathy. Oy, kawawa naman kayo, may sakit kayo. Alright? This compassion is seeing the situation of the people and doing something about it. Hence, not only did he preach the kingdom of God that sets people free from their bondage of sin, but he also healed the diseases and sickness that are upon the bodies of those people. Because they saw them, they do not have a God who protects them, who keeps them safe. They were harassed and helpless. They are a sheep that is without a shepherd. And when shepherd, a, a flock doesn't have a shepherd, right? what happens to the flock? They are scattered. And any wolf can come at any time and devour them and kill them, right? That's how Jesus saw the people who are not saved, who do not believe in God, right? They are harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. And we must understand that in the eyes of Jesus, in the heart of Jesus, this is how the unsaved world look like. They are harassed and helpless. And any time the enemy is trying to devour their lives, Snatched, be, being snatched away from, from good things in this life, right? Anytime, diba, they are at the brink of ruin and destruction in this life. They, they are going to be scattered and they are going to be prey for the enemy, right? So we have to make a decision to see the unsaved people in the eyes of Jesus and have a heart like Jesus. He had compassion on them. He saw their situation. And he wants to do something. And what did he do? He taught them the word of God. The word that can set people free from their sin, their bondages in life, so that they can live free. The word and the salvation that will change people's lives, that will lift their lives, and will break every curse that is upon them. The curse of the law, poverty, sickness, right? Destruction of the family. There is a lying thing in this world that... We feel like or we see like they're okay or they are provided for and that means they are okay. No. In the eyes of God, the unsaved are harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. May we always have a heart like Jesus and see them from the eyes of God. And so we will do something about it. We need to share the gospel. We need to tell them about the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name, they'll make Jesus the Lord and the Savior of their lives. Now, let us pray for that opportunity, teens, and that we will always have a heart like that of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, help us to always have eyes to see the situation of the people who do not have you yet in their lives as Lord and Savior. They are harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. They are so open to the move of the predators. They are becoming praise. They're going to be eaten alive. And I pray, Father God, that you will always give us that heart of compassion for the unsaved. Let us teach them the word of God. Let us be bold and courageous to do so. And let us never be hindered by what the eyes can see. But give us the same vision that you see whenever you see the unsaved world. Help us, Lord, to have a heart that is after your own for the people who are still lost in this world. And give us open doors of opportunity to preach the gospel, to teach them about the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. And Lord, for them to make a decision to receive you in their lives as Lord and Savior and to entrust their lives and future to you. God, we thank you for you will use us mightily in this ministry and that you desire for all men to be saved. You love them from the very beginning. And God, give us that love as well. Let it flow deep within our hearts as a burden for the unsaved world. We love you, Lord, and we commit the teens to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, teens, for being here with us at Destination. See you again tomorrow, 5 o'clock. God bless.